Hi, it's Annelie again. Today I'm speaking from Garching, near Munich, Germany. I will be speaking with American space physicist Joan Centrella about collisions between black holes. I'm going into this cube building behind me to meet her now. out at Ames Research Center in California. Okay. But let's take a look at this one. Okay. So how would one of these relate to my laptop? Well, each one of these slots contains a very high performance processor like you might find in a high-end laptop. Okay. But these processors are all connected together because they're all working on the same problem at the same time. Okay. And the way they do that is by connecting them with these cables. There's lots of wires in here that make all of these processors so that they can work together. But the really great thing is, though, that each of these boxes is the same, and all of these processors together, the cables go up into these and make everything talk together. So the entire room of computers can work on the same problem at the same time. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. It's quite loud in here. Should we go somewhere else at home? Okay. So you're the director of NASA's Gravitational Astrophysics Laboratory. Um, what exactly does that entail? <laughs> well, a Gravitational Astrophysics Laboratory is a, quite a mouthful of words. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so let me see if I can break that apart for you. Okay. So the Gravitational Astrophysics part uh, means that we're looking at the parts of astrophysics that have to do with the gravitational force being the dominant force. And so that has to do with um, black holes and their interactions, and in particular, the gravitational waves that they emit. Okay. And the laboratory piece means that there's an experimental component. Now, we have two kinds of experiments that we, we do. We have the simulation experiments, where we do the simulations of the black holes and experiment with them on a computer. But we also have an experiment that we're building called the LISA, the Laser Interferometric Space Antenna. And what exactly is that going to do in space? So what it does is it's, there's these spacecraft that are about like this size, mm -hmm. and there are three of them that are going to fly in the orbit of the Earth, following the Earth around the sun. Okay. And they're going to exchange signals with laser beams and these in a triangle configuration. Mm -hmm. And these laser beams will measure the distance between the two spacecraft in the pairs, okay. in the configuration. And when the gravitational wave comes by, it will cause these spacecraft distances to change with a particular pattern. Oh, okay. And that's the gravitational wave signal that we want to measure. Right. So that's the LISA experiment. Right. And the signal that we want to measure, we have to calculate that first. We don't know that in advance. And that's why we're doing these experiments on the computer. Right. So what will you learn if LISA is successful and finds these gravitational waves? Well, one thing that we will learn is whether the predictions of general relativity are correct. Okay. So general relativity, when the black holes merge, general relativity will make a very specific prediction as to what that waveform is when the black holes merge. Okay. And then, when we observe it with LISA, we will be able to do a strong test of general relativity and see whether, it's af whether or not Einstein was actually right. right. So the simulations you do using supercomputers like the one we just saw, are they cartoon-like or are they, what kind of animations are they? Uh, so the simulations that we do are of the merger of two black holes. Right, okay. So what goes inside the simulations is a computer code in which we solve the Einstein equations of general relativity. So uh, once we get all the equations solved, we get many, many numbers, and then we take those numbers and we give them to a scientific visualization expert. And he makes a movie of those, uh, of those numbers in a way that we can understand it and interpret it and learn about the universe from it. So let me show you a simulation oh, okay. here. So we have a little animation of, of our simulation, a little visualization. And what you see here are the black holes. These are these black spheres. There's one there and one there. And those are the surfaces of the black holes, or the horizon. Okay. And you probably know that the horizon is the surface where nothing can get out, not even light. Okay. Okay? And all this white and yellow stuff around the black holes, that's a contour of the gravity near the black holes. So if you see a contour map say of a mountain, you'll see all those contours of elevation. Right. So these are contours, and they're showing where the gravity is strong, near okay. the black holes. Okay. Now when I hit this little button here, we're going to see this in motion. So you can see now the black holes orbiting about each other, 
and the, the um, visualization is going to zoom out and we can see the black holes down in the center and outside these red curtain-like objects, those are actually the gravitational waves coming oh, okay. out from the black hole system. So you can imagine Lisa out here in space and these gravitational waves right. passing by the detector. Right. And now we're zooming down into the, into the center and you can see that final black hole. That final black hole is rotating. Mm -hmm. And it's rotating at 70% of the maximum possible rotation. Okay. Black holes are actually quite simple to understand. If you know the spin or the mass of the black hole, you pretty much know everything about it. Is right. That, is that really true? Yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. And, and that's why I, I told you at the end that the black hole is spinning at 75% of its maximum, and its mass is almost two times the mass of the individual black holes. About 4% of the total mass is actually emitted as gravitational waves. Uh -huh. And the amazing thing about the mergers is that 4%, if I were to convert that into energy e equals mc squared, if I convert that 4% of the mass into energy, then the energy coming out of that black hole, out of that black hole merger, is actually more than all the energy in all the stars in the observable universe. And the amazing thing about the mergers is that 4%, if I were to convert that into energy, E equals mc squared, if I convert that 4% of the mass into energy, then the energy coming out of that black hole, the, out of that black hole merger, is actually more than all the energy in all the stars in the observable universe. So how did you get into using supercomputers and, and simulations? Well, when I was a, a student, um, I really wanted to study relativity. I thought that it was fascinating. When I got to graduate school, I discovered that the kinds of problems I wanted to solve were too difficult to solve using pencil and paper. And they could only be solved on the computer. And so, somewhat reluctantly, to be true, I actually learned how to use the computer so that I could solve the problems I was interested in. Right, well. Have you always been, were you always interested in science and physics? I think I, I discovered uh, astrophysics when I was in a, when I was a teenager um, during the 60s when uh, NASA was engaged in the space race and there was a lot of information out there about space and, and I learned, that's how I learned about astrophysics. So the, are there ma very many women in this field? Well actually there are not too many women in this field uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, when I was younger in fact uh, everybody told me you know uh, this stuff is for boys and this is not for girls and I found that very distressing right. because I thought this was just fascinating and yeah. um, I didn't think it was fair to let the boys have all the fun <laughs> so I, I didn't listen to them right. and I persisted anyway and uh, today fortunately there are more women joining us all the time right. so it is getting better. That's great. Well it's been great talking to you today thank you very much for taking your time. It's nice to talk to you too Annalie. Okay.